Um, thank you for the um, invitation to the German Finance Ministry to speak, uh, uh, to, to give here some of our basic insights, uh, how we see the financial crisis effects and, and the regulatory approach. So um, I'm, I'm, I'm the person who usually goes into the budget and the European Affairs Committee to explain what is happening and, and therefore actually I hope you, you accept me as a, a step-in person. Um, President, ladies and gentlemen, distinguished guests, the real reason for the crisis of the euro area to our understanding in the Wilhelmstrasse is this. Investors didn't realize that growth in some European country was based on excessive debt, uh, public and private, and this debt was being used as a compensate for unsustainable growth models. In other words, uh, we, what, what there was was a tr tremendous lack of competitiveness. But short-term stimuli cannot compensate for a lack of competitiveness in the long term. Some people in Europe say that uh, we should focus on debt finance stimuli instead of structural reforms to enhance the competitiveness and growth. This, in my eyes, uh, too trivial, more Keynesian argument used by some people is that our policies will lead the whole world or the whole Europe into a long depression. There's talk of kaputt sparen or too much austerity. This is not our position. Not only because austerity measures have caused only a relatively modest drop in demand excess across Europe, not only because the ECB is preventing every inflationary and every deflationary trend through its monetary policy, it is not our position because fiscal consolidation and sustainable growth do not contradict each other. Which, one, which was a, one of the basic statements uh, Angela Merkel just made in the German parliament declaring uh, just before she left for the heads of state summit. Consolidation makes consumers and investors more confident in the future um, and the future of the uh, euro area and its economy therefore needs uh, ongoing consolidation strategy strategies and this will lead to sustainable growth. Germany is a case in point. Our policy of growth friendly re uh, deficit reduction kept spending well below GDP growth and generated solid growth rates. Germany has been strengthening growth through structural reforms, not just fiscal policy reforms. We have uh, made several reforms in the social security system and out of uh, labor and, and out labor market reforms as well. Now we have a, a picture. The old picture was of the sick man of the euro. Now, that was Germany 10 years ago before we started the reform. The new picture seems to be that uh, we are the, the Germany is described as the reluctant hegemon. And I think this picture is wrong in two uh, cases. First of all, we are not reluctant. We are construct, um, as, you, as you will now see, constructively, constructively and, and creatively uh, um, influencing uh, the European debate. And the, s the second mistake in, in this statement is um, that Euro the European integration is not a hegemonic uh, um, uh, experiment, but a partnership uh, exchange which uh, delivers progress to all member states. And therefore, actually, I would clearly say that other European countries can do what Germany has done over the last years. And in fact, as I see, the, uh, if I look all over Europe, many are doing it. Of course, we are now seeing an adjustment of the GDP of countries that now have low competitiveness and high private and public debt, le debt levels. But you cannot spend your way out of debt. You can spend your way to a higher level. You cannot spend your way to a higher level of competitiveness. There is no way around the fiscal and structure, uh, around fiscal and structural reforms which are currently being carried out in the countries concerned. The only way to achieve sustainable growth is to make your econo economy competitive and to reduce your deficits. I do not see how some economists can suggest that a country can credibly announce fiscal tightening tomorrow while loosening f 
uh, fiscal reins today. It seems to me that no one has ever won a race when starting in the wrong direction. And that does not create confidence, and usually that creates confusion. What we are aiming at is to get into sound policies which on the fiscal and monetary side as well. I, I haven't heard anything about what the Deutsche Bundesbank President Jens Weidmann has told it, but he, uh, his job and uh, the job of his colleague is on monetary policy, and our job is the fiscal side, and what, what we are both aiming is to keep sound policies on, on both levels of responsibility. That is why we, from the, we are the fiscal guys, that is why we have been improving the institutional basis of the euro area. 25 member states have already signed up the fiscal concept. Um, de uh, the, debt, the debt break we have, uh, now, uh, we have in Germany is now a European one. We strengthened the Growth and Stability Pact uh, to give the European Commission more fiscal oversight. And recent reform put a strong focus on prevention by em em emphasizing the MTO that aims for nearly balanced budgets. And furthermore, member states are not obliged to reduce uh, the excessive deficit by each year on the 120 rule and a new sanction system which with earlier financial sanctions and more automatic decision making uh, helps to enforce the stability uh, criteria. Added to that, we now have a permanent European stabilization mechanism and this is a reliable instrument for tackling sudden crises of confidence within the euro area. Ladies and gentlemen, we are creating supervisory structures that are designed for globalized financial markets. Governments, businesses, and individuals will continue to need third-party capital to finance productive investments. Individuals, companies, and governments will still need financial markets to distribute and share present and future risk, both real and potential. We need financial markets which function well and which ensure that limited capital resources are used efficiently. That's why we need to set the framework for the financial markets. We need the right checks and balances, and we need incentives that make these markets operate better not to their own benefit, but to the benefit of the real economy. A highly evolved and innovative financial system is essential if you want economic growth. So there's no capital market bashing out of the finance ministry. But I also see that there is a natural risk of excess. Regulatory efforts therefore have to strike a delicate balance they have to limit such excesses without stifling innovation and hampering economic growth. This is the political challenge. And there we're working on three principles, uh, which I'll try to shortly to explain to you. First, strict liabil liability, second, high transparency, and third, low contagion. And let me put these three principles into praxis. First, liability. The German government is putting responsibility for the decision-making and liability for the outcomes, outcomes back together. Only when excessive leverage return to a sensible level in the long term, only then it will return to a sensible level. Basel III is the key. Um, under this regulation, we will re uh, financial institution will require more capital to respond to the level of risk. At the, uh, at, at the German level, Basel III was approved by the German institution. At the European level, CID IV has been published today and therefore comes into effect. By implementing it, we are ensuring that banks will have to meet stricter capital requirements and liquidity standards. The implementation of Basel III is central, perhaps the central project in the area of bank regulation. Uh, to a certain extent, it represents a new financial order for the banks, or let me say more of social market economy than deregulated capitalism in the financial markets. Given that some banks' failures may have disastrous consequences for the in entire system, we need special rules to handle so sen such scenarios. But bank insolvency is and has to be to remain an option. 
that means that the path of orderly insolvency must uh, be open to banks as just as it is for other businesses. Our 2010 German leg legislation on bank restructuring made sure that the bank owners can lose their money in the event of a bankruptcy. I also believe it is right that extremely large financial institutions should bear an additional share of the bill for any future crises. That's why we started the bank levy. Banks have to contribute to a fund that can be used in the event of a bank restructuring. Let's go to the second principle, transparency. To have a high level of transparency, supervisors must be aware of all key risks. No market participant or no product must be, go unregulated. That is our long-term object objective. Supervisors, they don't just need to know the, that the risks posed by traditional banking and insurance, insurance business, they also need to know what is going on in the OTC trades, especially in the derivatives trading. That is why we already have strengthened supervision at the national and the European levy, and that is why we are regulating derivatives trading. Certain over-the-counter derivatives transactions will have to be made through central clearing houses rather than directly between two contracting parties. And we are pushing for the regulation of the shadow banking sector in the G20 and the EU level. Because of its high leverage, I'm personally worried that the shadow banking system could be a potential source of uh, modern day turmoil in the future. To prevent this, we have to adopt international standards which put strict limits on bank lending to shadow institutions and which make such lending more expensive. To this end, the FSB is looking more at exposure limits, stricter global, uh, global consolidation rules and higher capital requirements. And now to the third principle, ladies and gentlemen, of financial market regulation, minimizing the risk of contagion. That is why we have initiated strict regulatory obligation for the SIFIs. The G20 countries have identified 29 banks that will be subject to the special, specially high capital requirements. In, in autumn of 2011, we instructed large European banks to build up a core tier one ratio of 9% by June uh, 12, 2012 on the basis of the stress test conducted by the European Banking Authority. But it still worries me that in the last decade, the ratio of bank assets to GDP have increased exponentially. Clearly, the risk of a contagion, to my estimation, have grown. That is why, and, and a very, another good reason, we have in Germany introduced clear rules for reorganizing and possible liquidating systemically important bank. We will also require systemically important banks to have separate organization for their specula speculative prop trade and deposit taking activities. Of course, universal banking is not the problem. The problem is the heavy reliance on investment banking activities in universal banks. And therefore we only need to impose restriction on potentially destabilizing institution we need also to reduce financial market activities that could destabilize the entire system as well. By regulating high frequency trading and restricting short uh, selling, we want to limit market volatility and restore the regulative function of pricing. If activities such as naked short selling or computer added high frequency trading in the securities turn to be harm harmful for the economy, we have to cut them back. And as a precondition to apply these principles, the next step will be to establish a European single supervisory mechanism. Simply having just na national regulators is no longer enough if we want to make the globally and Europe-wide working financial system more resilient. The crisis has shown that we need to separate, it, separate the risk associated with government debt on the other hand and banking system on the other. That is so-called hostage question. The permanent European supervisor will cover all bank, but it will focus its direct supervision on significant institutions that covers the three biggest banks in each country plus all banks with a balance sheet total exceeding 30 billion euros 
or whose assets represent uh, more than 20% of national GDP. After establishing effective European supervision, we need to agree on rules for bank restructuring. We need to, this means the, the Bank Recovery and Resolution Directive as well as the Deposit Guarantee Directive. We need to create an, an, a single resolution mechanism for countries participating in the uh, SSM mechanism. This has to be designed carefully in order to be effective, efficient, and coherent. In the same time, it has to set the incentives that will encourage su sustainable growth and responsible economic fiscal policy. It should, it should build on a single resolution board involving national and resolution authorities. It should be based on contributions by the financial sector itself, which be, will be pre-financed and appropriate private backstop arrangement over the time. Let me say, and close by this, say something about last night. Um, the very, to, to put it in one sentence, the good news is that we now have European rules. Um, um, the, the, the disintegration of rules was one uh, factor of uncertainty. And uh, when Minister Schäuble came, uh, came uh, not home, but uh, back to Germany early this morning, this it was the starting point that we have um, um, reliable bail-in rules that puts the taxpayer in a very comfortable position. The old regime was the taxpayer first, and now we see that the, own, that the responsible people are not no longer the ordinary taxpayers, but we have a hierarchy of liability. First, the owner, then the bondholders, then secured depositors in, si in strict compliance with European deposit guarantees, of course, and after that, the resolution fund, which will be financed by the bank levy, then the country where the bank is based, and only after that, as a last resort, the European stabilization mechanism, as long as the paper conditions have been met. In the past, ladies and gentlemen, uh, it was believed that speculation generally counteracted market excess and had a, stabilization, a stabilizing effect to the markets. This, to my impression, to my analysis, and to the minister's analysis, is not longer true, especially not in crisis situation. Recent experience has shown that some, <clears throat> that while we turn with modern instruments, we, we, can, uh, we can bring more stability to the systems. There, there is an English saying about fighting today's wars with yesterday's battle plans. Financial markets regulators share this problem of having operate on the ba ba basis of past experience. We had to learn from the Great Depression at the beginning of the 20th century that too much volatility in the real economy is bad for growth and social stability. We had to learn from the financial crisis at the beginning of the 21st century that too much volatility in the financial markets can be bad for growth and stability as well. We are making good progress forward, reducing um, 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 vo volatility and, and promoting more sustainable growth in the real economy. That is our view on the uh, recent actual challenges and, and a clear political answer. This means more stability in the system, a, a rule-based uh, financial markets, and res mainly responsibilities for those who take the risk. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.